the AMD X870E motherboards are here. What is so different about them and why should you purchase that type of motherboard? Especially you have the X670Es around. This is Chris Mizo here and I'm going to explain the difference between the two. The two top tier motherboards in its class when it comes to AMD Ryzen processors. I like to announce everybody that pretty soon that there will be a build coming up on this channel. I'm going to be doing a 9800 X3D build with dun, 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 Rock Crosshair 870E Hero Motherboard. You heard it first. Thanks to Asus for providing this motherboard because I'm going to show you the insides and outs of this motherboard and this PC build upcoming soon. But first and foremost, let's talk about the motherboards in comparison. Now, if you know any of this information, feel free to go down to the timestamps down below. And if you're interested in any of these products, make sure you check it down in the description box. Now, you still can put a AMD Ryzen 7000 series processor in a X870E if you choose to, or you can go with the AMD Ryzen 9000 series processor in a X670E motherboard if you wanted to, or the X870E. Now you're going to have newer chipsets such as Wi-Fi 7 and other features such as Bluetooth 5.4. There is so much more robust features that you can take advantage of. You can see in the chipset diagram, we have to get rid of PCI Express X4 in order to give you the USB 4. Now, whether that's worth the sacrifice to you or not, that's for you to decide. That is the biggest difference between the two. I'm going to compare the Asus ROG X870E ASUS E Gaming motherboard next to their X670E, which was their predecessor. Now, they both are the best in class when it comes to the AMD Ryzen chipset. The capacity is up to 192 gigabytes, it's up to 8,000 mega transfers per second, which you can take full utilization and full advantage of. One of my personal favorites on the X870E is that they feature Nitro Path DRAM technology. The way it is electrically engineered is for when you insert the memory or the RAM inside of your memory slots, they use these gold fingers to kind of, um, it's kind of abrasive for your RAM to go in. If you ever notice on the bottom of your RAM sticks, you'll notice some sort of wear. Not enough for it to really damage your RAM, of course, but enough to where you can see like a slight scuff because technically it's really scratching your RAM when you are installing it. Now with the Nitro technology that ASUS does provide you, it prevents any scratching from that, which gives you a much better connection and you can see a much better performance from your RAM because of that. Exclusively to the X870E, it does feature a memory profile where it is enhanced. On top of it, it does have the USB 4. Now, the difference between USB 4 is it goes up to 40 gigabits per second compared to the 20 gigabits per second. So it is double the speeds of what you're used to. The X670E, some of their motherboards in the higher end side of ASUS does feature USB 4. But now it comes standard with two USB 4. You can utilize that instead of actually using a display port on your PC. You could actually use USB C over to your monitor, which is a much easier connection for you. Now, the original one, which had two PCI Express X16, which was the X670E, compared to the one. PCI Express 5.0 X16 expansion slot. First off, let me tell you right off the bat, you're not going to take a full advantage of the X670E's two PCI Express 5.0 slots. And you're probably thinking exactly why not? Because you're maximized at X24. AMD does give you enough for X16 and it gives you another X8 for your NVMe. So you can use X4, X4, and X16. You cannot use two PCI Express 5.0 cards even if you did have them. It would split down the power because of that. 
So that's why it also makes sense to get rid of the expansion slot because now you have something in place of it which you will take advantage of which is usb4 which is definitely something to look forward to on top of it the ethernet has improved tenfold uh, instead of a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port now you have a 5 gigabit ethernet port you also get wi-fi 7 on the x 8 mde and bluetooth 5.4 Asus also has a total of five M2 slots compared to four M2 slots. Now the front USB to 11 ports, both of them use the same audio codec, which is the ALC4080, which is phenomenal. It does feature one Aura RGB header. It gives one alteration mode switch. It does also give one 20 pin three system panel header chassis Thunderbolt header. Now this is all on the X670E and which is what is missing out the X870E, but it wouldn't matter about the Thunderbolt header since you already have USB four. And then on top of it, you aren't going to really use the alteration switch and RGB header is practically now replaced with a RGB. The biggest unique feature it also has is the PCIe slot Q release slim. And what is amazing about that, it makes it even easier to install NVMEs on your PC and within minutes, which is something I cannot wait to show you. On top of it, it even has a M2 Q slide, Q antenna, and it even has the Q dashboard, which is new for the X870E. And personally, one of my favorites, the way you install a new PCI X16 card. Typically, a video card will go in there. Asus makes it easier. I don't know if many of you will really miss it, but the graphics card holder is missing. A lot of graphics card does come with a bracket standard, and typically, when you do use that holder, it doesn't really hold well anyway, because most of you probably had the power supply covered with a plastic shroud. Now, the Gigabyte Aorus Master. It features up to 8600 megahertz for their RAM for overclocking compared to the 8000 megahertz. On top of it, it does have graphic support, AS Media USB 4. That's something Gigabyte really needed. The USB ports weren't fully taken advantage of, especially in their line with the X670E, as I mentioned in, on an earlier video. It does now have a two USB 4 because now that is more standard. Now, Gigabyte's USB-C can produce up to a maximum resolution of 3840 by 2160 at 240 hertz. Now, you're probably not gonna be on gaming with integrated graphics. For the X670E as a display port instead of USB 4, personally, I think would be for better use. It does have one USB 3.2 or Gen 2, for X870E compared to USB 4. The difference between USB 3.2 Gen 2 is that it's 20 gigabits per second, which is two times slower compared to USB 4. When it comes to their audio chipset, it uses Realtek ALC1220, which is the same exact type of audio codec they've been using. And they have also installed the five gigabits connection. On top of it, they used Qualcomm's Wi-Fi 7 compared to Intel's Killer Wi-Fi 6E. It does have four M2 slots and four SATA ports compared to the six SATA ports that they had. On top of it, as a total of 21 USB, including the front. It's the same, but the x 8 the e is obviously gonna be much quicker. They dropped two of the cooling pump headers for RGB headers for those who are ARGB fans. The clear CMOS and two antenna connectors is on the Gigabyte Aorus Master. I compared the Asus ROG E Gaming X870E to the X670E, and now I just compared the Gigabyte Aorus Master X870E compared to the X670E. I gotta also mention MSI, which is also going to be interesting and of course the most budget friendly, which is their X870E Tomahawk compared to the X670E. Now the biggest difference between it, it has a maximum memory of 256 gigabytes. It does have overclocking up to 8400 megahertz on the 870E. It does support AMD's POR speed and its JDEC speeds. It does have Realtek's 
8126 5 gigabit LAN connection, which is the Ethernet port. On top of it, it does have Wi Fi 7 and it does support Bluetooth 5.4. Now, all the X670E motherboards, none of them have Wi Fi 7, they all have 6E. Now, for the audio codec, it uses ALC4080 from Realtek, which is an excellent audio chip, but isn't as good as the other two I mentioned from both Asus and Gigabyte. On top of it, it does have up to four M2 slots and two Type-C display ports. It does have a clear CMOS button on top of a USB 2 and a USB 40 gigabit connection, which is gonna be USB 4. It has three PCI Express X16 slots, and on top of it, it's USB speeds differ between the 12 versus the eight. Now it does have the one power connection, which is the PCIe power for the A pin and the one easy connector header, which is also extra on the motherboard. The price difference isn't going to be that large. You might see 30 to $50 more for the X870E versus the X670E. So personally to me, it's definitely worth going to the 870 e if you don't have a X670E board. If you're coming from, say, the X470, or maybe you're coming from the X370, it's definitely well worth your mind in order for you to pick up one of those type of motherboards. I got a lot more to announce this month. There might be even a giveaway. Famib guys, I hope you found this content very useful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And also, if you're not part of the big, wonderful fan man, make sure to go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. And for all the newest updates, make sure you follow my X handle right here, as it is the same as TikTok and IG as well. Fam, fam guys, let me know what you think. And if you have any questions at all, make sure you post it down in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.